Cam, what's on your radar? Well, last Thursday, 30 TikTok influencers were invited to a White House Zoom call for a press briefing about the war in Ukraine and rising gas prices. The social media stars were briefed by National Security Council staffers and Jen Psaki, where they were basically told inflation is Putin's fault. The goal of the White House is obvious. It's to get their messaging or propaganda out to the younger generations who consume most of their information through the platform. Ironically, it's a Chinese-owned platform, but that's a different story for a different day. The briefing seemed to work. Shortly after, many TikTokers, TikTokers began, I think that's what they're called these days, right? TikTokers began posting videos about their invitation and what they learned. So here's an example. Why is gas so expensive and why is the United States inflation rate at a four-time decade high? I had the opportunity to ask the White House why gas down the street is $7 and here's what they said. The obvious reason, we are getting out of a two-year pandemic, when use goes up, price goes up. But the call was predominantly about Ukraine and Russia, so how does that relate? Russia is one of the top three producers of oil and it is actually their number one revenue source. Now with Putin starting this horrific fight between Ukraine and Russia, nobody wants to work with him and do an international trade. So with people being scared of war and limited resources, prices are bound to go up as well. For the people who can't pay $7 for a gallon of gas, there's an app called Gas Buddy that shows you the cheapest gas near you, as well as a link in my bio to donate to the misplaced refugees of Ukraine. According to them, one reason that this crisis is specifically notable is because of the size of the invasion, which is the largest since World War II. Second, they acknowledge that this coverage and balance exists for crises throughout the world and encourage us as content creators to use our platforms to highlight different issues as they arise, especially when mainstream media fails to do so. Third, they said that just because something isn't getting mainstream coverage in media doesn't mean that the United States isn't giving aid, whether that be monetary, humanitarian, or military aid to other issues throughout the globe. And last, they said that they hope that this crisis at least raises the public consciousness around geopolitical issues throughout the world, and that even though Americans may not be proud of other things the United States has done globally, that they hope that we can look back on this moment and see how the United States rallied the West to stand up against Russia and be proud of that. And once again, that's what they said. All right, so obviously with only 30 TikTok influencers involved, the White House was selective on who they invited. They likely sorted through numerous accounts to find those who were most likely going to hear the White House's explanations and ultimately parrot them. So this would be unlike other press briefings where even hostile news organizations could be in the room and in the end, what they report on and how they spin it is up to them. The White House knows each time they do a press briefing, Fox is gonna walk away with one spin to the story while CNN has another. So the entire idea of a curated friendly group calls the ethics of this into question, except are TikTok influencers journalists? Because if they are, then it's a scandal to only invite the friendly ones. But if they're just entertainers, then is it really any different than picking and choosing celebrity sponsors who then promote products or ideas? Then again, one could ask if it's even the job of the government to essentially hire or encourage celebrity spokespeople for the messages they want to amplify. Should the government be doing that? Celebrity spokespeople are common with nonprofit organizations and charities that promote certain agendas. But should our government be engaging in this, or should they just put information out there and then hope the private and nonprofit sector do the promoting. Along these same lines, it recently came out through a Freedom of Information Act request filed by Blaze Media that the U.S. government paid $1 billion to various news organizations to promote COVID vaccines. The Blaze reports organizations such as ABC, CBS, NBC, Fox News, CNN, Newsmax, MSNBC, New York Post, Los Angeles Times, Washington Post, BuzzFeed News, as well as hundreds of local newspapers and TV stations were paid using Americans' tax dollars to, quote, strengthen vaccine confidence in the United States. Many of these organizations silenced any sort of dissent in the process. I personally know writers who work for some of these even more right-wing organizations who pitched contrarian stories only to be told by their editors, no way. Was it because they were getting a nice chunk of change from the U.S. government, or were there other reasons? Perhaps they were getting a mixture of government cash and big pharma advertising dollars that incentivized them to censor certain information. Despite the latter being a potential violation of the First Amendment, there are some good questions surrounding these two examples we should be asking. I think it's probably okay and even expected for the government to advertise certain things. For example, I would expect and even encourage the government to run ads on how to register to vote and where to cast one's ballot. I think more people need to know how to do these things and the government should be the one informing them. 
I think it's probably okay for the government to run advertisements that inform people of the dangers of smoking or drinking and driving, for example. So I think there are times when the government would spend money to ensure the public is informed about certain things. Maybe that's okay. But what level of promotion of certain ideas are we okay with before it becomes too much? If the government spends money on a narrative they want pushed, how do we ensure it doesn't influence the media to halt dissenting opinions in the interest of padding their bottom line? When does it go from good information to state propaganda? And that's the big question. When does it change from this is what the government you know, is pushing, it's fine, they're using dollars to do it, and when does it then cross the line into propagandizing people? Well, I guess in one sense, everything the government says is propaganda. But propaganda can be correct and it can be incorrect. Just like the same was true with this false Russian propaganda, right? It might be Russian propaganda that there are these bio labs in Ukraine or whatever. It's, it is propaganda. It might also be accurate. Right? It might, it right. might be true. So the same, in the same sense, almost by definition, everything our government says is propaganda. Some things might be true. Some things might be false. I think the TikToking. The TikToking, is that how we say it? Yeah. We, we must sound like we're ancient. Um, <laughs> but it, it, I, I think it's. I, I think you raise very interesting points, and in like you know, who are these kids that are? Yes, just going to parrot the talking points of the regime. There is nothing new about it, though. It, it, the, the platform is new. But I remember you probably know this more than I do. The Biden administration or the, the Obama administration mm -hmm. would hold briefings with liberal bloggers like Matt Iglesias and Ezra Klein to disseminate talking points essentially to them. Now I'd probably like to think those individuals were maybe more discerning than whoever these TikTok people are, but maybe not. Maybe it was the same kind of deal. Right. And it, so, uh, and Trump also, like, and it goes back even beyond that. Remember what Trump did his, what, social media summit where he had Ali Alexander and a whole bunch of other like right-wing influential. Carpe donctum. Yeah. Remember like, Carpe? All these influential YouTubers, uh, Obama would have historians uh, so that he could like kind of pitch his message to historians. So historic. They would have celebrities in. Right. Uh, and, the, and campaigns, or at least uh, the Hillary Clinton campaign I know did, and Obama's campaign, right. I'm sure Jeb Bush's campaign, you know, have people who are, are on staff whose job it is to reach out to celebrities and organize yeah. them and then get, try to get them. But, that, but that's not an endorsement of that. You're, you're right, right to point out that there's something kind of gross about it. I right. Think. Yeah. Now, yeah. to the, to, uh, I didn't watch it. Any, any, tick, any of these TikTokers other than the ones that you just played. And to their credit, both of them were fully transparent. Right. That they're like, this is what the White House is saying. Yeah, I don't remember those liberal bloggers actually being necessarily always transparent. Well, if you're a right, TikToker, yeah. it's kind of fun. You know, it, it kind of boosts your credibility, right, yeah. to be able to go out there and say, well, I was invited to the White House press briefing, and this is what, they, you know. So for them, yeah. it, you know, it's, it's this boost. So, of course, I think they would be more likely to say that because it makes them look more official. Um, but it, it does, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I, to me, it feels like, and I'm not, you know, I haven't been around this in the journalist side mm -hmm. of things like you guys have for a long time. And so to me, it just seems like as a normal person that there would be some ethics around this. Like you can't just invite people that you think are going to be friendly to you. I mean, you'd have to invite everybody. But the government? Such, well, I would think that they would have they, to, yeah. No, I mean, they can do whatever they want. But, but I, I agree with, I, I will also criticize it the way you're, I agree with your criticism, yeah. but they, there's nothing preventing them from doing uh, Maybe, and, I mean, you could take the position that there, perhaps there ought to be, I might take that position that the government should not be able to use any sort of resources or tax dollars to do self-promotion. Um, I, I was looking at that Blaze story that you just mentioned, yeah, and that was advertising, basically. Advertising dollars were spent in the media companies. I would possibly be okay with prohibiting that or just like I would I would possibly be okay with the government not being able to put up anti-smoking signs I that's how I would feel about it I'm a libertarian yeah it just seems like there should be and I know when I you know my radio days we had to run a certain number of advertisements that weren't really advertisements it was like nonprofit you know we had to set aside a block mm -hmm. of ads that were for these nonprofit sorts of entities so it makes sense to me that every news organization, or every media outlet, I should say, radio, television, print, would have to have a designated section for government propaganda. But everybody knows that's the government propaganda section. Right. So you know this is just what the government wants you to know about. Because there are things that I do think the government should be informing the people about. You know, like how to register to vote, where to vote. That to me is the government's job. And because it's not being done, because maybe it's not lucrative for media entities, then they just don't really tell people. But if, but so that's, so I do think there needs to be a way for the government to get messages out to the people, but it also has to be wrapped in a, this is from the government.
And that, right. uh, so right. that to me maybe would then limit, okay, is it, prop, you know, that's like, okay then. And the, gov know. the government's real goal is, right, to get their message out without their fingerprints on it. Right. right, and that's where I have a problem. That's when I think, okay, this just sounds like propaganda, because if, the, if this was coming out of, let's say, Russia, we'd be like, oh, well, he just invited a bunch of people that were friendly to him to a meeting, and then they were, you know, to, to go out there and disseminate this information, and we would have a problem with that, right? But here we are doing it, and we act like there's no issue here. <laughs> I'm not acting like there's no issue. I have a problem, I mean, I have a problem with society it. Society in yeah. general acts like there's yeah. no well, issue. Well, all governments are hypocrites. I mean, they think other governments are bad and, and just trying to tell you what to think, but not us. Not us. We're the good ones. Yeah. It should be, a dis you know, like in radio, for example, if you're giving away uh, concert tickets, you have to say who gave you the concert tickets to give those yeah. away. You can't just give them away. It's, like a, it's a violation. You could lose your licensing. So it's plugola payola. You have to inform the viewers or the listeners <laughs> where stuff comes from. So yeah, but they did do it in that in they, those they two kind videos. Of did. Right. Maybe they yeah. said you have to mention that this came from us. Oh, I'm sure the government didn't say that. No, no, they, there's no right. way they would say you have to mention it came from us. They would prefer if you didn't. They'd prefer if you just made it seem Parodied like it. of your yeah, own right. volition you came up with this right. idea that credit, everything the administration that. Yeah. said and that's right. yeah. plugola payola they shouldn't yeah. do that they that's need bad. to they need to tell people so all right well uh ryan i think your radar's next looking forward to that